Good morning and welcome once again to Orphan Car Garage YouTube. My name is John. I'm the owner and operator here at Orphan Car Garage and we're located in Abington, Massachusetts, which is about 30 minutes south of Boston. It's mid-January and I'm able to film this video outside. I'm pretty proud of that. Not too often we can do that in mid-January here in Massachusetts, but I dare say we've been very lucky this season with the amount of cold and rain or lack thereof. Certainly gonna take advantage of it and profile for you this beautiful car here in front of us. So the name of our company is Orphan Car Garage. And in case you're not aware, an orphan car by the textbook meaning is a car that was built by a manufacturer that's no longer in business. This Studebaker here in front of me is a perfect example of that. Although we don't focus solely on orphan cars here at Orphan Car Garage because to me, any good, reliable, turnkey, classic or special interest car that needs a new home is an orphan and we do our best to find those orphans' homes. We've been pretty successful with that since we started in 2018. So the car you're looking at here in front of us is a 1959 Studebaker Lark, which is the first year for this model. It's the car that basically saved the company, at least for the time being. Studebaker, in case you're not aware, merged with Packard in 1954, the same year that Hudson merged with Nash to become American Motors. There were talks among those presidents of the four companies to merge all four together to become American Motors. If that merger had gone through, the new American Motors Corporation, which would have been comprised of Studebaker, Packard, Nash, and Hudson, would have been the third largest automaker in the world, making it one of the big three, ousting Chrysler from the third spot. Obviously, they didn't, that didn't happen. The president, George Mason of Nash suddenly passed away of pancreatic cancer during negotiations and the remaining CEOs could never agree on how to get the job done. Basically, arrogance and egos got in the way. So that big merger never happened. Studebaker and Packard went on their way and Nash and Hudson went on their way. Studebaker Packard Corporation was formed in 1954. Uh, what Packard wasn't aware of or didn't do their due, due diligence to find out is when Studebaker merged with them, Studebaker was in the hole. They were losing money. Uh, they weren't so forthcoming with that during their negotiations. Why Packard didn't do a little bit more research to back that up or to find out for sure, we don't know. The rest is history. But uh, right out of the gate then, the company was, was financially in trouble. Thankfully, Packard had some money in the bank, even though they were a smaller company. By the mid-1950s, the company was in peril. The big three were selling cars faster than they could build them. And Packard and Studebaker were certainly languishing. They needed to do something quick, and this is what they did. They, in, they designed the Studebaker Lark. This was going to be their new economy car that was going to compete with the Rambler American. They knew that the big three were on their way, uh, on their way to sell their own compact cars, but that, those weren't coming out until 1960. The Corvair, the Valiant, and the Falcon, of course. So Studebaker knew that they could beat them to the punch. Also, Studebaker Packard, Studebaker Packard Corporation, didn't have a whole lot of money to play with because, as I had mentioned, they kind of were in the hole right out of the gate. So they took their full-size car from the full-size car platform, which was 1953 to 1958, and they basically shortened that platform. And if you look at this car's profile, you could see how they did that. They cut the front and the rear overhang and they shortened the front wheelbase, but the passenger compartment of this car, if I go in a little bit closer and you don't see, that looks like it could be a Studebaker champion because it was. I've, the doors are probably interchangeable with their full-size car. When you think about it, it was pretty ingenious. It gave the interior space of a full-size car in a small package. The other thing you could do uh, with this car when it was introduced in 1959 that you couldn't do with the Rambler American was you could get a V8. This car has that optional V8, a 259 cubic inch V8 that actually went about zero to 60 according to the auto magazines in about 10 seconds. That's pretty, that's pretty astute for a small car in 1959. The big three with their compact cars wouldn't get a V8 until the senior compacts came out in 1961. So Studebaker was far ahead of the game. You could also get a flathead six in these cars, and many of these cars were equipped so. Both really good engines. Studebaker made really good motors. They didn't buy them from anybody else. They were their own engines. And the 259 that's in this car is a really, really good engine. It's been around for several years. 
this car here in front of me is uh, from my personal collection. I'm starting to liquidate some of my personal things for, for, for ease of space in my shop. I bought this car for myself, so that's gonna tell you something. I love original and unrestored cars. And if you've been following me here on YouTube, you probably see that I have a lot of that that I sell. Um, and this car falls into that category. This car is largely original. I purchased this car from the original family just about a year ago. The grandson, actually, of the original owner. I have all the original paperwork, even pictures of the woman standing with the car. All that tells a story. All these old cars tell a story. And that's what I love so much about these vintage cars. They all have a story. And many of them have been around longer than we have. This case, this car has been around about 10 years longer than I have. So it has a story to tell. It actually looks a little better than I do, come to think of it. Uh, most of the paint on this car is original. And I, we had it professionally corrected. I have a team that comes in and does a paint correction process. And if you don't know what that is, I suggest you look it up. Uh, it's basically a two or three or sometimes four step process to bring back the gleam of original paint. Remove all the top coating of oxidation and staining that happens to any car that's been outside any period of time over the period of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. This is original paint that we're looking at here and it gleams like new. Just a beautiful shade of turquoise. The um, actual color of the turquoise from Studebaker escapes me at the moment and I'm kind of upset about that, but we're gonna call it like a Tahiti turquoise or a Tahitian turquoise or something like that. Somebody will correct me in the comments below. I did know the name of it and it's escaped me. So that being said, I said most of the paint is original. There's been some minor touch-ups over the years and this might have been done in the 70s. But way down there at the bottom, you can see a little bit of, little bit of discoloration. That's a touch-up area. The car was obviously touched up. This dog leg back here, you can see just a little bit of paint difference there. You probably wouldn't notice it unless you focused in on it. And then the other section, the only other section that doesn't have its original paint is this right front fender right there as you can see right there. Other than that, this car is, a, is, a, is an original paint car and is what I would call a really true survivor. This car's never been restored whatsoever. Beautiful trim, headlight bezels, the bumpers have very little, if any, flaws. There are no dents or dings. This car is rust-free. It's important that I mention that. Somebody got a little excited with a buffing wheel there at one time. Obviously, someone that wasn't familiar with original paint cars, and that's a shame, but I didn't want to touch it up. Uh, it, it, it adds to the story of the car. It's a little bit of patina. But overall, you can see this car is just amazing. I installed these exact reproduction Coker Classic tires just a few months ago. It's about $1,300 in tires alone. The brakes have all been done. Fluids have all been changed. The car's all been tuned up. This car is completely turnkey. One of the best parts about this car is its interior. All original. The door panels, the carpeting, the seating, headliner, dash, all original. In case you haven't noticed, the car also has the optional Flight-O-Matic automatic transmission. It makes this car very easy to drive. So you've got the little V8 259 made it to the automatic transmission. It makes this car a great driver. 57,755,000 miles. I have no reason to believe that's not original. The original family told me it was. The car's condition backs that up. Best part of the interior, if you didn't, if you didn't think it was great enough already, right overhead, the original shifting instructions for the Flight-O-Matic still on its original cardboard sleeve on the sun visor. Look at that. You just never see that. Still there. It looks like it was installed yesterday. Those are the original shifting instructions for someone that didn't know how to use the flight automatic automatic transmission never removed from the visor just incredible padded dashboard so i want to show you that too some cool old oil change stickers i love getting a car with those they just add to the story of the car this car could talk and it does talk through its history. Really, really, really nice shape. Just an, uh, just 
a jaw dropper. I mean, the color made it to those, with those wide whites, the chrome trim. This is what I believe they called the Regal package, which was the top of the line. You could get a deluxe or a Regal. These cars were um, available in four-door sedan, two-door sedan, two-door station wagon, and a sporty little two-door hardtop. They built about 131,000 Studebaker locks in 1959. Not too shabby. Sadly, by the time the big three introduced their compacts and then their senior compacts in 1961, the Studebaker lock was becoming kind of dowdy and uh, sales really dropped off. And sadly, by 1966, the company had folded. But certainly would have folded long before 1966 had it not been for the Lark. So I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, again, my name is John. You can reach me at 508-954-8090. Pricing on this car, original survivor car, low mileage, documented, turnkey, nothing to do, the best color of 1959, $12,900. $12,900 for a Survivor Class Studebaker Lark. And let me tell you, I looked high and low for a long time for a Survivor Early Lark, and it took a long time to find this car. Probably will take me even longer to find another one should I decide to. You just don't find them original like this at all. Give me a call, 508-954. 8090. Check me out on the web, orphancargarage.com. Subscribe to my page below. Comment below. Find us on Facebook under Orphan Car Garage. I'm always posting new cool finds there. And uh, hope to talk to you soon. Hopefully this weather holds out and I'll have another video for you real soon. Thank you.